that in the chat? Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, again, welcome to our regular meeting of December 12th. Please join for the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. There's a bunch on the agenda. Um, I know if Bobby Joe's not here, right? Is that correct? Uh, correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, so <laughs> we'll just start right off. Um, we do have Mike and Janice here, but any public input? Are you guys are here for the EDC? We're going to make sure that's on the end to end here. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, um, I, I'll make a quick motion that we um, add to our agenda, uh, and it's a regular meeting, our transfers for this year. Um, we're kind of doing this early. Brad feels that nothing's going to change, and he just wants to be ready for the auditors. Okay, so I made a motion to add this. Do I have a second? I'll second your motion. Okay. Any discussion about adding that to our agenda? Okay. Great. Thanks. Um, first thing is election of officers. Um, I'd accept a motion for uh, for chair. Let's do chair I'd first. Like to nominate Nick Owens. I'll second the motion. Okay. We, is there any other nominations? We're all good. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Um, Vice Chair, I'd like to. Was there any anybody against the, the motion? Unless you wanted to speak against it. No, no, <laughs> I did check. I did check the, the flavor of the room, so I appreciate your. <laughs> uh, I'd accept the motion for Vice Chair. I'd like to make a motion that we elect Cynthia McCorkendale to be the Vice Chairman. Do we have a second? Okay. All right. Any other nominations for vice chair? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we have uh, four and uh, against it. Okay. And one abstention. Who's abstained? No. Dee, oh, did I you didn't... vote? Did yes, you vote? I, I voted against. I didn't abstain. Okay, against it. So, so, so four to two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. All right. Uh, consideration of the Board of Finance uh, meet in the next year's um, meeting dates. I'm okay. sure Mary has that in her. Yes. Schedule. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the minutes as presented. No, or we're on the dates, yes. Sean. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, yeah, I'd like to make a motion that we approve. The dates for our regular scheduled meetings for 23, 24. Okay. 24, sir. 24. All, 24. 24. Yeah. All second, Josh Wilson. Okay. Any discussions? Anybody see a date that is not good? I know Valentine's Day. I purposely wanted to see uh, Brad on Valentine's Day, but that's... Uh -huh. no, we scheduled something else on Valentine's Day. You got my birthday, July 9th. Oh, so. boy. Could make sure everybody writes that down. There's your memo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have a motion and a second on the dates. All in favor on the dates for next year? Aye. 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 The record show it's unanimous. Uh, let's see here. Uh, consideration. Um, did we not do the minutes? I'm sorry. No, we didn't yet. do the minutes yet. Well, we're on the minutes now, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. So everybody has the regular schedule minutes from November 14th. Does everybody have time to read them or if there's anybody absent? Any discussions on that? I'd accept the motion. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the minutes from our Board of Finance meeting on November 14th. Do we have a second? I'll second the motion. Okay. Any discussion on the 14th minutes? I'll try everybody. Everybody in favor of the minutes of the 14th of November? Oh, did you have something about oh, oh, no. I'm sorry. Oh, voting. You're sorry. Right. oh, you're voting. Okay. okay. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. He was there, John. Are you good? Yeah, no, I'm sorry. All right, all right. Um, so we're moving right along. This here is a vehicle uh, that we, came. We had other minutes to throw it up. Oh, why do I have all these? I have multiple oh. copies of the same. May I explain what you have? That's a select board selectman. Oh, I yeah. see. I just glanced. Mary sorry, Mary Morris. Sorry, I'm sorry. See, what's happening is the board, the board of selectmen minutes where it was discussed about the EDC exactly, yeah. right, right, and right. also the two cars. So I just highlighted them. Very good. Right. Exactly. Yep. All right. So the board of finance it, it, again, they just voted on them, and that's why she gave right, it. Right, right. So, yep. Mark it's the same logo there. You know, yeah. Besides the board of selectmen. Oh, let me circle that for my. 
Okay. Um, the first one, this was a vehicle that um, Park and Rec has now. Um, it was bought on a lease. I'm against buying a vehicle on a lease, but it was done in the past administration. So um, it's off of a three-year lease. I did talk to um, Rachel today and uh, the vehicle's in great shape. It's got plenty of life left in it. And uh, I, I would be in favor of purchasing that, okay? Um, that's a Tacoma, I'm sorry. Brad, how many miles are on the, the RAV4, that, that Toyota thing? I'm not sure how many miles. I know it's under it's the first selectman's vehicle, so. Right, and that was it, off a lease also. Yeah, they're both leases. Yeah. Usually we do 39-month lease for whatever reason. They're a little bit cheaper. Right, right. However, the math works out. Um, but yeah, they're both under mileage. Um, they would have been, I think, 12,000-mile leases. And I, I, I thought they had to be, but... Um, they're well under 36. Right, well, right. Plenty of life left in them. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, again, the, the park and rec would keep the Tacoma. It's a silver one. Fesh always drives it and empty the garbage with it and stuff. Um, but the, the plan, and if everybody's okay with um with the first selectman's car, it's coming off a lease. And in the 24 plan for the for uh, I'm sorry, building department was scheduled to get a car. So in the he had put it on his last year, and I had him push it to 2425, uh, purchased to replace the 2007 Chevy Trailblazer. So the plan right now, if this goes through, is most likely to replace, take that off the capital plan at $35,000 and um, replace the 2007 Chevy Trailblazer. It still runs, it's beat up, it's 16 years old. Um, Mileage usually aren't the issue for our cars because they stay in town. Right. They just just rust and turn, everything else. Yeah. What are the gears for these models? So the the Coma and the Rav4 are both two thousand ones, I believe. Th three year leases, right? I mentioned yeah. so. two thousand and two thousand and one. Two thousand one. Two thousand twenty one. I'll tell you what. Really, twenty twenty or twenty twenty one? Yeah. The time because we picked them up late of. 20, I think they're 21. Um, yeah. Nick, this is paid for out of capital not recurring. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That pocket's getting small, but. <laughs> yeah, I believe they're both 2021s because the Equinox that we bought recently was a 21. So that's the gist of it, you know. So yeah, yeah so I'm a little confused. Tell, I, I got where the, the Tacoma was, but where is the Toyota Rav Four been? In the first selectman vehicle. Oh, that's the yeah. first selectman was, was a Rav Four. Okay. Yeah. So that and then that's going to go where once we buy it. So when we buy it, assuming that the purchase of the Chevy Trailblazer, which is next, yeah. goes through, the Chevy Trailblazer will go to the first selectman when it comes in. It's going in production in the coming week, so we won't see it for a couple months. So when that vehicle comes in, in theory, given what we know now, it would go to replace the 2007 Chevy Trailblazer in building inspection. Okay, so the building department is going to take yeah. okay. And they had, Brad had pushed them off uh, for a year, and they're coming up with a, yeah. a $35,000 vehicle. Yeah, and the, the building official right now uses our own their, we have one other lease vehicle and that comes up in july so we'll the plan will be to buy that out at 18. so they'll have two three-year-old vehicles your secondary and then the, they have a third vehicle because there's three building inspections it's an old police car i think it's a, like a 2015. um it was one of the better ones but if you look at it it runs and it runs nice but the guts in the middle console are ripped out because of the police vehicle so the 2007, we probably wouldn't get rid of and we would keep it as a fly car in case we needed to until we keep these things till they fall apart. And then we try to sell them at auction and we get like 300 bucks. Right. Okay. And, and I'm sorry, is it a traverse or a trailblazer? It doesn't matter. So the a trailblazer that's the, the place. The old car is a trailblazer. The new vehicle that's proposed in the next line for the 36001 is a traverse. Right. To replace the first selectman's vehicle. Yeah, yeah. 
And the plan would then, in theory, when that's up, pass that one down and keep the first selectman in a newer vehicle because he's the one most likely to go out of town with it if he's up in Hartford or whatever he's doing. Um, so, But our plan is to purchase that, yes. not lease it. Correct. Yeah. Um, and the, we did really well with leases for a long time because the rates on them were so low. Rates are high now. It makes a ton of sense just to buy them. I have a question. Yes. What is generally your process for auctioning off the cars? Because if you remember, we had a bit of a pileup several years ago. <laughs> yeah. So there were like literally? 17 vehicles. And I just don't want to be paying registration and insurance. insurance. For... So we don't pay registration. Our insurance is all pooled on the vehicles and it's based Still. on. I under, yeah. We don't. So we do an auction about once a year. Okay. So That's we cool. our purchasing agent sent an email out. What does everybody have to get rid of? Okay. Um, but, but, but explain that pool of the insurance. It if you have 20 every cars or 21 cars. cars, you're saying if we add cars, it doesn't go up? It's all the, like, the value of all the cars. It's not like you adding a car to your house is a bigger difference than us adding a car to our pool. But if you have 17 junk cars, which I know you don't yeah. have now, that yeah. would be... Correct. A yeah. large... Yeah. yeah. Okay. So... so. Okay. Any other discussion on that, John? Huh? So you want one motion? We can do one motion. Yeah, I think we can in this CNR. So I'd like to make a motion that we approve the buying out of two leases for with the two different vehicles being stated, the Toyota RAV4 in the amount of 21603 and the Toyota Tacoma in the amount of $27,880 for a total of $49,800, i am sorry, $483. And a CNR. And take that out of the CNR account. I'm okay. going to second John's motion. Okay, so we have a motion. We have second any of the discussion on the cars, the two lease cars that were taken off there. Um, just one last thing. The right now, both of these are on the operating budget for the lease payments. Yes. So when we get into the budget for in February, when we start meeting on the budget in the contracted services line for building inspection and for selectmen, it will go down. We're roughly around six thousand each each budget. Uh, the um, first selectman I know is forty six hundred bucks okay. in the budget, okay. and it's you to take five thousand out of each department. Yeah, great. Okay. Great. All in favor on uh, John's and Will's motion? Aye. Aye. The record show unanimous. All right. Consideration of um, a new Chevy Traverse, and this would be for the first selectman's car that we're moving around. Um, this seems like a really good price. Is, does it have back seats in this car? <laughs> yeah. So uh, MSRP on it, I think it's 43. Yeah. Um, and when I was talking to Nick about it, I'm like, well, nobody pays MSRP. And then I would caught myself because so now you people, do right now. Yeah, a lot of people do. You know, um, so we are able to get it for six to seven grand off MSRP. That's why we're moving on it now. And he, I think, uh, what do you call it? Todd wanted to see a Chevy in, in BL1 or... Well, I think the first selectman wanted to go back to the American brand. Um, so I think we got a little extra push and push a little. We'll buy American. Great. Good. All right. Any other questions about the purchase of this? Does someone like to make a motion? No. Bob, come on. I'll Bob, make a motion that we have You guys going to make, them make more motions. Make sure to can't interrupt your motion. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the purchase of capital loan recurring of a 2023 Chevy Traverse in the amount of $36,011. I'll second that. Okay, so we have a motion. We have a second and a discussion on the new Traverse. All is in favor? I'm sorry. Is it is a it, hybrid? It is not. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. All in favor? Are you a no D or no? <laughs> I'm a yes. Okay, all right. Yeah. The record show unanimous. All right. Um we're almost to the end. Um let's do the let, let's do the, the park. We know we have Janice and, and Mike here. Um they came to us um uh, probably over a month ago already. So if you want to just uh maybe speak of it a little bit, I guess. Sure. Um basically we are asking and uh we've had some prior discussion with Nick and uh, the board select and pass last week uh, funds coming out of the <laughs> profits of the sales uh, to cover the ongoing maintenance of the park 
for the course of the next 17 years. So that's an item that would not ever, in anyone in this room, that's all, ever have to hear about a request for funds to support Clark Park. And the detail is in the motion very specifically. It includes you know, the, the, the cutting and the trees and the brush and the landscaping and the, the signs and the maintenance of the signs. So and the retention fund. And um, we did review those figures um, with Bob Dibble to get his view. He thought they were very much in line. We had previously gone out to bid. So we know, you know oversight wise um, in terms of how the park's being taken care of right now. And I think it's a, uh, from, from EDC's perspective, we had a unanimous vote, the same with the Board of Selectmen. Uh, I think it's a prudent investment given the profit we're making off of the sale of the lots, which right now, based on two lots that are already closed, we've received the cash. Um, and after we have retired the town uh, debt uh, and with the three lots sold, we're looking at an approximate $800,000 profit. I'm just rounding, okay? And, um, you know, so that, that we forget about all the tax benefit of the structure, everything that's gonna come along with that. And then once the other, the fourth lot is sold, we would have a net profit that should be in the 1.1 area in terms of for the town. So taking 362,000, $413, whatever it is, All right, um, would be a way to maintain the park to the standard that we have, all of us collectively as a town, raised it to. And um, uh, I think we'd all sleep better knowing that our town jewel is being well maintained. Uh, when, when, when the guys came to us, um, Again, there was a fund set up when this thing was built, and I was in favor of it right off the bat, just because, you know, this is not found money by any means, but we can fund this park for the maintenance and actually not have it on the taxpayers every year. So that's the only reason I was in favor of it, that this fund can be set up and actually they can draw off it for specific reasons, and then we don't need to keep coming back to the taxpayers each year. So I have questions. Yes, of course, though, please. Um, two things. One is, uh, how does that break down per year? Do you know? I mean, is it, well, are we all going to be dead when it's gone? I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, there's a couple of there's a couple of variables. And the, the dollar amount is not a variable. Um, we're basically uh, presuming uh, we currently cost it fifteen thousand dollars, but it's going to go up a little bit because of the extra property and the extra lots and the retention fund. That doesn't exist. Well, now it does, and um, we're also asking to have that an interest-bearing account, so that this way we can accrue that interest over time. So when we start at fifteen thousand now, once it's all said and done, if, if that goes up a couple of thousand dollars, we're factoring in about a five percent increase per year. Okay, just it, just a ballpark then of just how much a year. Do you think eighteen thousand, twenty thousand? It could be eighteen. We won't know until we go out to bid for the new section of the park. We know that right now we're paying fifteen thousand. Okay, that's close. That's close enough for me. I mean, I just okay. didn't, you know. What and then you built in with a five percent increase for the I landscape or whatever is going to be I doing understand. the work, and that's and then, typical in the trade. And yeah. you know, the returns we get on the interest bearing account right now, we could get five percent. You know. But, Three years and now, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. The other question I wanted to know was, I just recall, I don't know how many years ago it was, but do the tenants have any input in this and how on what's being done or how it's? There was a time when the EDC was, you know, in charge of the maintenance and the landscaping, and then the tenants somehow didn't want that anymore. No, that, that well, I mean, what what was that I can, story? I was then? there. I was here. Tell me that time. story then. So the story back in that time was that the, the uh, when we originally built and developed the park, this is before my time. We had funding from the state, and with funding from the state, we had to install certain sets of rules, both from the state 
and then also um, at the time PMZ in terms of regulations and rules. EDC oversaw that as EDC oversaw the selling of the original lots that were sold in the park. So with that was regulations about how long you have in order to build, which we actually do have on the lots now. Like what we don't want is speculators. So there were rules that were put into place that became dated for the current status of the park. Because keep in mind, when the rules were um, expired, okay, the town never, no one ever actually took the rules away. They just expired because we had our... Uh, well, the grant years. ran out. You, you stopped. That, you stopped getting the funding. No, 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 no. no. Come yeah, up I'm with sorry, sure, right, right. There, 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 there was no ongoing money. Oh, I thought your regulations from the state who gave you the grant. That's what I thought you were saying. No, it no. was from the sale of the property. From the sale of the properties, we we were and the investment that the state made originally to develop the property. We had to live with certain rules and regulations for the ongoing support of the property. So the monies that we had left could only be used for Clark Park. The regulations is a separate entity. Those expired after 30 years. Those had a drop dead date. So we looked at revising the rules, but, um, and it wasn't the tenants, it was the residents, because it's, it's not a, the tenants don't have a right to vote unless they're a resident of the town. Right, or a property owner. Well, if they own that's the property, property. I understand what you're saying. They're not residents. They're, they're not property right. owners. So, they own the building. So um, it wasn't an issue. It wasn't, there was a couple of tenants that expressed concern about it, but the 95% of the people had no care one way or the other. So at the time, there were property owners that attended the meeting, and by the, uh, you know, a couple of votes, the rules were not uh, renewed with the changes. Fine. Then it falls under the, the P and Z exclusively from the standpoint of building and expansions and so forth, just like with the lots that we had. But that didn't stop our mission of continuing to develop the park and to take advantage on behalf of the town. And so far, that looks like it's going that way. I might be not following you, but what about what are the regulations and rules that expired that were precluding? Was it precluding development, or were there very specific? No, I mean, I don't I, even know what that means. It's, I mean, we could get you a copy. It's, I don't. It's I don't in the neighborhood, copy. I just thought maybe. probably 50, 60 pages long. Um, and th these were rules that we inherited because this was going back thirty years when they first came out, but. It, they had things such as the town early on, just like we would be today. We don't want to have, we want to turn that into a tax producing successful business operation in each and every lot. Okay. So what the fear was going back into the early days is people buying up lots to speculate. Yeah. Hold on to it for five I years. understand. Oh. So there were rules that said, you have a lot, you have to do this in a certain period of time, or the town has the right to come back and revoke the sale. Things like that. Okay, so now you have no rules and regulations. No, or you we do, no, on the current lots that we're selling, we do have those types of things in the mix, meaning- No speculating. No speculation. I understand. Okay. I, I just want to, make a statement. We all know that time flies when we're having fun. Oh, and I've been on this board for eight years, so it's been a lot of fun. Time flies. I forget when the two of you first came in front of this board, but it was early in my tenure. And I actually went back in the old notes and you two projected what would be a possible outcome of the sale of these properties to and you are almost spot on where it actually came out. So I think you two deserve a tremendous amount of credit. And remember at the time, there was some negativity floating around in the town about what your efforts were and maybe even to the a degree of what your character was. I thought that that was inappropriate then. And now with the benefit of seeing the end of the story that you all came here with, 
being spot on to what you told us it was going to be. And yet, I just want to congratulate you for being fantastic financial planners, doing great jobs for the city, for the town, excuse me, in light of some folks who were in town and being disbelievers. So, Mike, Janice, thank you very much. I, thank you, Mike. This has been tremendous fun watching you guys do your job and do a fantastic job. Well, today. Nick and I ate our humble pie. Oh, definitely. I never thought it was going to be this quick. No. Never. We were non-believers. You know, it's incredible. But now we thank believe. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank God you didn't finish up with a pot. Yeah. Yeah. No pot. It takes everything that you see with it. There's no but. Does anybody else? Yeah, can I ask maybe the sure. same the Jump same uh, question Cynthia had, but I'm going to ask a different way because I didn't really understand. So three hundred and sixty thousand dollars, but what stuck out is seventeen years, right? So just tell me how we we needed this to get the seventeen years. I know it's fifteen thousand. I'm sorry. Let me let me ask the question a couple of ways. So we've been spending fifteen thousand for the last five years. On the park, no and maintenance. It, it's per year. Approximately, per, let's say fifteen thousand per year. Past year is a solid fifteen thousand. Yes. Okay. So, but the, this 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 fund, we're going to call it a fund because you're right. going to put it somewhere, is going to create whatever the percentage. But if you go out seventeen years spending fifteen thousand, I know it's not going to be fifteen thousand forever. It's two hundred and fifty thousand or fifty five thousand. How did you get to that dollar amount and then put it? You know, so many years on that. It's fun. You're compounding the fifteen thousand each year at five percent increase. No, I get it. So, so that's that's exact. So you're doing fifteen thousand times five percent, and that gets you to the three sixty two in seventeen years. Correct. And I think you said like also, also signage. It's also signage, right? There's, there's other. There's other. There's other specifically identified. Uh, I mean, here's the way, and this is why we wrote the motion in the way it is. Whether it's 16 and a half years, 24 and a half years. All we know is that the only use for the money is to take care of the park. So uh, the maintenance the park. No, maintenance no the park. improvements. No well, maintenance. Well, for the hair is maintenance. Yeah. For the signs, just to make, you know, if the sign breaks, we gotta fix it. You know what I'm saying? We're not gonna look for just, basically the money is to is strictly upkeep of the park. Upkeep of the park. And the motion. Which uh, Nick, you have? I gave. It's mm -hmm. it's like Marty Lawler wrote the mark the motion to be so Someone specific. Read it, and it's got to be good. Okay, <laughs> all right. It's, it's, well, it's very it. specific because yeah. this is what you know. Here's the thing: we know ten years from now, I doubt any of us are going to be in this room. I know I won't be. Okay, <laughs> all right. So I don't know who's going to sit in our seats behind us. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have somebody attempted from that to down the road. Say, oh, you know, tough times. We need to grab that money. Oh, absolutely. No, it's a right. restricted okay. account. I understand okay. that. Well, that, but you know what? It's just like it's. That's why it's as black and white as we could make it. In saying, hey, we we're two things have happened. We've done a good thing for the town because we're going to be able to deliver. You know, right now eight hundred thousand. Uh, if if you took the three sixty out, so you're at four. And then you have the Still other lot, you know. So I mean, th there's there's no downside, uh, and it's just the thing is right now, one way or the other, the town's been paying for the current upkeep of the park. So it's under whose purview, though? I mean, do you are you the one who Wait, goes across? It's in here. Oh. Maybe it's defined in the motion. Uh, yeah, defined very defined. Very yes. right. yeah. Given your projection actors to the board, I think we just owe it to you to uh, believe that this is going to be the right number. Yeah. To your point, if it's not, all right, we get a little bit less maintenance or we get a little bit more maintenance. Right. But exactly. maintenance is defined. So I mean, I think it's all going to the right place. The only, I mean, what I, you, I know Nick, you and I spoke about it. I know Brad. I know you may, you may have some reservations, but we're going to talk about that, that in a second here. Yep. You know, a in terms of yep. interest-bearing account, um, and then also the loose end that you have with the chargebacks, which I know you guys are figuring out. That's, so that's right. got nothing. Yep. To, I just want to do with this motion. Any this answer. is not in the motion. What I'm asking, right. um, just that is it? I mean, how many people are in the commission? Like. Seven. Seven. And so I'm just more, I'm just curious about the method of communication. Does, does the owner call you up? Do you go and see? I mean, 
I got a broken side or there's the road's going to hold no, it. Well, this, this, this here is all so our town owned compound. Just common space. The this, common space right. is. The town owns okay. all of that. Burnley's okay. or Burnley has been there yeah, 20 no, years, I mean, but there's, there's, if, if, if their road front is, is their grass, they take care of it. Personally. I understand that. This so, is all just our common that doesn't have a building okay. in front of it. Are you going to drive around the park and look for holes in the common areas? That's the thing I'm wondering. Is someone, there's a department going, here, there's well, a department it's been here. It's going on for years. Yeah. And the biggest thing is is the, well, the brush just cutting. No, who does anything? No, right, exactly. And and park and rec used to do some of it. Right. The highway department. That's what I'm but now to this is actually now. setting up to pay private contracts. I know about the paying part. Okay. I'm just asking about the management part. It's just out of curiosity. Right now, it's it's overseen by EDC. Right. So it will continue to be overseen by EDC. So when the grass is high or there's brush coming into the road, the EDC says, hey, why is this not being done? And they make sure it gets done. Because they go out in a bus, all of them. Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, I don't know our members actually are. That's great. In the Business home. That's great. So wow. that answers my question. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. So Brad, um, this is not, this motion does not talk about being put in a fund, an interest bearing fund. So right. can you speak of that a little bit? So there's um typically they used to have a let me back up. There's still, I think there still exists a cash account that um I don't know if it's interest bearing or not. I'd have to go back and look in the bank. Um that once the FJ Clark Fund 13, FJ Clarks went negative with how much money they had, um, that they owed the town more than they had in cash. We eventually took that cash and goes, well, if you owe us money, so we're going to take that cash. So they have zero cash on hand. Um, in theory, we could either put on the books and say, here's an IOU for $360,000, or we could physically transfer the $360,000 to the to the bank account. It really doesn't matter to me. Typically, you know, I fight for the general fund. You know, I oversee all of it, all the funds of the town, but the general fund is what drives their tax base. Typically, I don't like to give away revenue. I understand. So, but, but how, if if we're guaranteeing 362 to go to maintenance yeah. and it's in a general fund, what stops the money being spent in other ways? It's still, it's still, as the- It's still two, earmarked? Two, it's earmarked. It's, it would be reserved. It wouldn't be in our fund balance anymore. The only thing physically, the cash would be in our account, but, but on it's paper, it's earmarked. It's not in our fund balance anymore. Then, um, okay, again, maybe yeah. it's a stupid question, but so the five percent would not happen that way. It wouldn't happen that way. There would be no growth in the, in that money. Correct. But so, if this board says that they want when it comes time to transfer that money, which there's still other steps after the board of finance for that, says that we believe that. We'd like to just set them up, put the money there, and maybe for the next couple of years, the interest rates will be enough to pay for it, and they'll just extend it out. But well, that was the idea, right? Yeah. To, yeah. Yeah. So could it not be set up like the CNR, like an account? Yeah. An interest-bearing account. But even like the CNR, all that money. Not in our operating budget. I know yeah, it sits yeah. in the budget. It's just in revenue. It's, it's, I it's yeah. kind of a big pie thing, and, and we pie. get revenue from it. Yeah. So. I, I was thinking the same thing. It would be like CNR, yeah. where we set up a fund. Yeah. It has a it has a balance like this 362, 478. The cash sits somewhere else. Yeah. Cruise interest to the benefit of the general fund. Yeah. But when we go to fund, put money to the fund itself, we just take it out of that cash and put it into the fund. So it in a way. And I think if I'm thinking about it correctly, yeah. it's going to operate very similar to other funds that we have that have a stated amount yeah. that get funded. If they're pre-funded, the cash stays in the general fund and then interest accrues to the benefit of the town, like you're saying for the general fund. Yeah, that's like how CNR is set up right now. Right. And so that's what I thought this was going that's to be. That's what so, I thought but too. That's, but that's, their request is not that. Their request is to physically hold the money in a different bank account 
and that they so they benefit not from the account. from the increase with the with the this interest. The CNR account is not a separate bank account anymore. So the, any interest that that money, the million dollars or so that CNR has on hand, well, more than that because the unallocated for the million three. So the one point nine million dollars in CNR cash. Any interest that that gains goes into the general fund. Yeah. I, I could have misread, yeah. likely maybe I did misread the yeah. Board of Selectmen minutes. It certainly is clear that Mike made a suggestion to the Board right. of Selectmen that yeah. it be an interest bearing account, but it looks like the first the first elects motion doesn't talk about it. Correct. Exactly. When I spoke to Dan outside of the Board of Selectmen meeting, he said to me, that's the Board of Finances. Yeah. Okay. And it is because that affects revenue in the general so look I, i'm a big proponent of simplicity <laughs> and and kind of copying prior good practices so i was assuming this was just going to be run like capital dollar curve we'll set up a fund and we've got a bunch of funds right yeah we'll set up a fund it'll we'll get funded to the extent of the 360 to 78 yeah. and we'll just transfer money when it's needed that to me is the easiest way to oversee it and to you know, account for it. Well, yeah. except so there's never an account. advantage of maybe a higher interest yield and then going from se year 17 to maybe 21. Well, but that benefit, John, is going to go to the general fund. Right. No, I know, but you're still going to get interest on the worry money. about trying to fund the the, the park at some point. I don't, yeah. Well, maybe in 25 years. <laughs> I don't know. Well, and to Mike's point, God willing, from yeah. his lips to God's ears, I won't be here, but yeah, you know, it'll be a different board of finance. It has to be yeah, they'll deal. figure it out. I, I, I'm with Bob. I, that's what I was thinking. It was going to be a separate. I bet you don't get to 17 years out of it if you if you take the 360 and you start burning at 15 plus five percent every year, which I think is a reasonable number. Well, I, I think, don't think you're going to get the year 17 to have money in the account. I don't know. Okay. You know Mike was saying, I mean, you know, yeah, it's it's. I think uh, the numbers there, but it's there's no action. Um, Let's just say that if we had if uh, the interest. Uh, interest rate over compounded, keep in mind power com compounding, is that uh, we might be able to stretch it out for a couple more years, be it two, three, four years. If we don't have anything, then we could be uh, you know, three years short. We could be a little bit short, but you know, I mean, all of which would not be anyone in this room's problem. I'm just putting on my. Uh, private enterprise hat and saying this is a, if you're going to lock that money up take advantage of every ounce of that money and if we can get now it's going to the general fund we're still going to get the interest i know we're going to get the interest but it's not you know it's 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 if that's the only way you can do it then you can't do it i mean it's that's government it's not, it's not the only way but my concern my gut feeling just from you know where i come from is that i i feel uncomfortable like it, it's almost as if okay, that's like another inch. It's not even part of the town anymore because we're not going to ever see it. Like, of course, you know, if it costs what it costs, but you know, it should be filtered through like everything, like every town expense. So, it it could be set up as a separate fund. I don't know. If it already is a separate fund, right? But do yeah. you? But it's just a question of of who has jurisdiction over it. I I'm very nervous about that. Well, yeah. it states very clearly that they want jurisdiction. Over I know that it says right. that, yeah. but I think I'm saying it makes me uncomfortable. So I, 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 I personally disagree because I think the two of them have shown so that's fine over the course of the last since the start of this. I mean, they've hit this, you know, profit on the head. They've take, they've done an amazing job, and who are we to sit here and second guess and make it extremely hard for them to have the lawn mowed? I, like, Why I'm would not, it be like, difficult? Because it wouldn't be like, well, they could do what they do. It's just that we would be able to see what they're doing. No, I mean, I'm saying that we can't see what we're right. doing. Right. It's it's I think, let me just ask Brad, is this, this would be the only case or the only situation of something like that? Well, not like SOAR has cash on hand that they get interest on, but they have who? I'm sorry, who? SOAR, the SOAR department. Oh. Um, water doesn't, but water still owes the town some money. Um, from back when, like right. 10 years ago. Right, um, that's it's, a little it's different. It's down to like 300 grand, but it's, you know, it used to be like $2 million between water. So that's come way down. Um, it's kind of all over the place, in the, to be honest. Yeah, and it's not a question of yeah. trust. It's not trusting. It's just as far as the process goes, yeah. 
It is so Cindy, are you asking them to then come to the board of finance every time they want to spend money out of their own account? No, yeah. I'm asking them to request it request it just as a fiduciary transaction. Then not to have a different account in a different yeah. bank or even they're not gonna so, check. But, it's not trust. Do you understand yeah. what I'm saying? So but let me just explain. To come in and get permission to mow the lawn. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I actually am doing it. To me, it doesn't really matter which way we do it. Either way, what would happen if the Board of Finance approves? It's a transfer out of fund balance of 360. Parks and Rec doesn't ask us every time they want to mow a field, right? So they just carry on and do like Park and Rec. I don't think this is. Let's get back to. Yeah, we can talk about this another time. We're, but. Well, we're gonna. We're, I think we're gonna decide tonight. But we're not talking about. Are we gonna do the three sixty two? We're just talking about who's gonna get the interest. Right. That's all. Well, that's well, all. Really, that's question it. is. As long as we all agree that we're gonna. That, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I think that's the first question. And I think we all are in favor of that money going towards reinvesting in the park. And then yes. 360 taking it all the taxpayers. The absolutely. Yeah, right. Can I just finish my one thought yep. for a second? So, no matter how this board decides, if this board decides to take from fund balance $362,000 and give it to the FJ Clark Fund, it goes on their books. Once it's on their books, it's overseen by the EDC. Yep. And then the EDC then falls under the board of selectmen because um, it's not the general fund. This because we're using the fund balance, which is overseen by the Board of Finance, that's why the transfer here is there. But once this happens and they have $360,000, um, it goes under the purview of the Board of Selectmen. Whether or not the you guys, the board decides to put it in an interest-bearing account or just set it up as a pretty much an open line of credit up the three, either way, it's on their books of the 360. It's just a matter of whether or not this board wants to give it to them in cash or as a transfer. But either way, the control of that money goes to EDC and then overseen by the Board of Selectmen once this board decides to take That's fine. fund balance and send it off to them. So really, it's That's fine. It's I not, yeah, you know you don't, any oversight. That's it fine. doesn't really give you any, by not giving them it into the interest bearing account, it really is no more oversight. No, that's the question about, just about, about the, the, the amount. That's yeah, all. but it's this motion and and Dan and, and I know the first selectman did it, but this is um, pretty solid that the, the language in here it's just for maintenance. Yeah. they're not going to buy a Corvette with it if okay. they have to maintain this park. Yeah. No, so. I didn't think they would be. John loves when I say Corvette; he buys them all the time. <laughs> <laughs> You mentioned being his brother for <laughs> well, well, it's not even funny, Bob. You... Yeah. <laughs> I've been carrying him for 55 years. Yeah. Uh, Will, did you have anything to add to this? Or I'm I'm in favor of the motion that you made. The fund would be the uh where it needs to be. Where do you want the five percent to go? Personally, I would like it back, yeah. You know, to me, but <laughs> that would right. I'd rather stay with them. That's D U F F, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the input there. I appreciate that. Um, someone want to make a motion? And we'll see. So how well, everybody... before somebody makes a motion, I think the consent, you should ask for a consensus if everybody's in favor of well, what we're going to do. Someone made a motion and then we'd, we'd see the census if it passed or not. I, I will make a motion that this Board of Finance approves as presented the motion of the first select and that we approved taking $362,478.45 from the profit of the sales, finish the strike. Funding to be determined. I think to John's point, we'll figure out how to fund it. So you want to treat it two different motions? So he's going to, that's, right, what that's, what's, that's what I wanted to clear up. Oh, that. okay. So I thought we were pretty good, yeah. um, but we can do that. Yeah, do, we, do we have a second? Oh, no, no, work on the, he's yeah. got a motion in. in, in yeah. And we were going to work on a second. Was yeah. that your? That, that was the motion. Mary, just yeah. finish out the string right, right from the board of selectmen motion. Okay, so we have a motion. And I will find it. About the motion, Excellent. Sorry. So, is there any? Uh, D, I know you're on mute, but is it? Uh, I, I'm, I'm good with that motion. I do have a question about the five percent about the interest. That would right. be a clear, but that fund. can come after. Yep. We'll finish up on this, and yeah. then we'll go back to funding. So. Okay, sounds good. 
Okay. All right, so all in favor on funding uh, the EDC out of the general fund for 362, blah, blah, blah. All in favor? Aye. Let the record show that it's unanimous. Okay. So does someone want to go back to discussion or, or make a motion about, on this? How about I make a motion that we set up the account that the EDC is in control of it and will be made however it needs to be worded and i'm sorry i don't know the wording that they'll be in control of the fund and the interest bearing portion of it they'll, that's they'll so get the I'm, benefits i'm looking for that motion right yeah. so you have a motion does anybody want to second that i'll second his motion okay so we have a, a motion and a second and a discussion on where the five percent d do you want to jump in here yeah, I, I don't think I have a question on the 5%. I think that that is um, additional money is that would be needed year over year for inflation costs and that kind of stuff. So that's not really my question. My question is more like if we want them to be able to um, like extend these funds by earning some percentage every year, right? And adding that to the balance. Um, is there a way to do that even if the money is our part of the general fund? Like could we prorate the money that is earned as part of that three hundred and twenty-six thousand dollars, or whatever it is, while it's in the general fund, and just give them that percentage for average percentage for the year. That's interesting. That's sort of. You, I was, was going to ask. Pretty interesting. interesting. You could. It's not as clean because then you got to take that. You got to take a percentage of whatever's in that account. You got to look at it. Just math, and obviously we could do the math on it, and then book that entry. It would just be a lot cleaner to just have it sit. If you want them to receive the benefits of having that cash on hand and have it be interest bearing, it's just so much easier. We have a healthy fund balance to just um, move the money into this account. And then it's very easy to, for them to see reporting wise how much cash is on hand. But, and so, Brad, I think that makes sense. My only question is, would it actually save them a little bit of money not to start an extra bank account and have the fees associated with that? The fees are minor because we we have to keep a certain amount of our funds in non-interest bearing accounts to pay the analysis fees of having all these different bank accounts. So there really wouldn't be any fees with that account. It'd be there, it'd be borne by the account that is the non-interest bearing account. I gotcha. We have to keep like fifty thousand dollars in non-interest bearing accounts. Yeah, it's like a minimum balance yeah. you have to have to get. Yeah. Yes, Bob. My initial preference <clears throat> was really driven by a hope for simplicity. And simplicity in part comes from kind of just recurring processes. Yeah. But I think what you're telling us, Brad, is you don't, this isn't gonna by funding it directly to EDC. Yeah. As opposed to doing something more like capital non-recurring, it's not going to cause you any more work. You're not worried about controllership or any of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Frankly, I'm, I'm agnostic. I just thought simplicity would drive doing it like capital non-recurring. But if your advice to us is it's a push from your perspective, then you know, yeah. Yeah. I think it's a little from the the um <laughs> the only difference for us is when Savvy books a monthly journal entry of all the inter all the other bank accounts, the non-major accounts, she has had two other lines. Increase cash, book it against revenue of interest. It, it's 30 seconds every month if it's in its own account. Um, the accounting system does the rest if it's just in a do to do from mode. It just, you know, so. Oh, I, I always thought it should be separate. I didn't like the idea of it being in the general fund, but at least it would be separate. Well, it'd be earmarked separate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So your way or the motion that John made, it's going to be separate, but they're going to benefit with, yeah. with the interest. Right. Yeah. When when I started 12 years ago, the town of Bethel had like 45 bank accounts. Now we're down to like 15 because we consolidated a lot of this stuff. But a lot of those were minor or they didn't have really any money in it. We're just holding bank accounts to make more work for us. <laughs> Like the coffee machine. Yeah. yeah. Right. The right. EDC, coffee. or as we call it, Fund 13 FJ Clark, mm -hmm. having its own bank account is very minor because they already, you know. Okay. Dan, you... Uh, in, uh, first selectman came in and we obviously went with supporting that fund. Okay. And now we're just debating about should they get the extra interest? Maybe this thing prolongs a little bit further. Kind of big thinking a little bit. Um, 
and I think we're kind of going that way a little bit. It seems to be, you know what I mean? So yeah, I mean, personally, we, we've discussed it. I'm I'm very open minded to it, as long as to your point, it was something that made sense and it was simple. We could set it up. Yeah, I'm I'm all for it. Right. Um, right. At the end of the day, you know, we could have done it two ways. We, by the way, we could have even decided instead of giving thirty, three hundred sixty thousand that we just gave them so much per year. There are a lot of ways we could have seen this cap. By doing it this way and giving them something and saying, you know, we think it's going to go up 15, 17 years, I'm all for it. And I think that having an interest bearing account is fine with me. Um, but again, that was kind of a board of finance. Yeah. And I just think it's a big thing that we're just not going back to the taxpayers that we can at least say, okay, here it is. Take right. care of it, please. And you know what I mean. And and we're not putting an increase on the taxpayer every year after year. You know what I mean. Or you can look at it, the EDC has been in control of this park for over thirty years. Right. It has done a great job oh. creating jobs, creating taxes yeah. for the residents of Bethel. And I think they're going to be responsible with the funds. Well, no, no, I'm not worried about yeah. the money. If I anything. I mean, so right. I mean, right. all by all by that statement, I think yeah. that you should move the question and, and yeah. Should... And just one more quick, if you, if you have another minute, John. Oh, <laughs> I'm beginning to feel your pain, John. Oh, yeah, no, 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 you have no idea. <laughs> You'll do it early morning. Right, what, what would come off? You know, who's carrying some of this money? I, I, I know the EDC, and again, not to go, it was going in the red for having Fairville County there or whoever. But is there money coming off of someone's budget, park and rec, or highway department? Um, so, a couple of years ago, when Park and Rec stopped mowing it, it was less work for them. But I think some of the reason it came off Park and Rec is when Park and Rec mows town property every 10 or so days, you know, and you, Maybe you know, if you look at your lawn, days, yeah, at yeah. certain times, if you wait 10 <laughs> days, it looks bad. Yeah. Um, so Park and Rec mows to a minimum other than fields that need to be played on. Um, and I think, so when it started, they, they started using it, I so there's no savings, but we're getting a better job in other parts of the town. Yeah, is that fair? savings is it take a part timer, however long it took a part timer to mow it over the summer, probably every ten to fourteen days. Yeah. And okay. sometimes that's fine, and sometimes like this last year, it's not fine to mow every fourteen days. Okay. So and John, one one quick thing. Yes, I don't know if you guys even spoke of it. Eventually, we will have to come back and clean up the two hundred and sixty-one thousand. Yeah. yeah, that's like, like a transfer. Yeah, I want to make sure it's mentioned in every discussion that, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, like, yeah. that the board has yeah. considered it. Just so everybody knows, it, 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 the EDC has been running on a negative um, half of Janice's salary and half of first select. It's kind of been all balled up, and we're going to clear that up with the sale of the property, so it gets back to zero. Basically, the EDC owes the town the money. You know what I mean? So, but it's just being transferred. Well, it's also important, like say now, because we're not we're not giving them three hundred sixty two thousand and then just saying you owe us all that back. I'm giving you a hundred. Oh no no no! Saying, we're going to zero and then giving them the three sixty two. We're going to get right. two sixty one back somehow. We're going to write it off. Right, exactly. Thank you. I just want to clarify one thing that it was never in my in my intention to say that you were qualified or responsible to 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 whatever oversee the money. It was the same principle as well. We don't, ask, we don't tell Lisa she has to ask us for paper clips if she wants to buy it. It's just with the question of the overarching. That's what I was getting at. I'm all for it. Great. Excellent. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, we'll try everybody's mind. All in favor on John's motion? Aye. 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 Let's show you unanimous. So we're going to do fun, and you're getting extra money. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your work. Thank you, Thank so you. Mary. You had a good. Uh, understanding of what that motion was that it's going to go it's amazing she can, Mary still, yeah, she can even make you look good trust me <laughs> she will weave that into a prose that is beautiful and poetic thank you everyone all right um so i guess we can do um the transfers or do you want to talk about that in your comp control we'll do the comp report first just because you thank added you, uh, thank the transfers you. at the end thank of the meeting thank you that's very christmas very christmas um, uh, can we share this to yes. my copy oh i stole it yeah uh, we're going to do the comptroller okay. report first. Yeah. Okay. We can do that. Um, so, revenue still looks amazing. <laughs> we spoke, talked a lot about interest. Um, what was booked when I finished the comptroller's report, we had $485,000 worth of interest in five months versus a budget of $450,000. That doesn't include at least another $22,000 of a statement that we received in the mail today that's for November. 
Um, so through November, we're over $510,000 in interest. Um, and the two lines down from that on this front page under use of money, we also have $302,000 in change in future value in an investment account that is growing. Obviously, everybody knows right now it's a great time to have money and it's a bad time to go out and get money. Uh, luckily, because the school locked up, the, not the school, the town locked up all the school debt before interest rates started going crazy. Um, thanks, Bob Kozlowski and Bob Manfreda for pushing that through at that time is um, town's in a great spot to we have the cash yep. and we're not borrowing any right now. Um, revenue looks great. Um, property tax collection is down a little bit, but it's still um, in the ballpark to hit her 98.6. The last couple of years, Paula will tell you she hits over 100%. Um, it's trailing a little That's bit wonderful. now. It's because of the, the prior year. Mm -hmm. Even if you look at in the bottom right, prior year we budgeted $550,000 in collections. We're at 317, so 57% five twelfths of the way through the year. Um, so everything's looking where it should be for that. Um, expense wise, I'm happy where everything is except for park and rec, but park and rec, we're gonna keep talking about not being happy where that looks right now until they come back and we look at the either the 285 or whatever the number turns out to be after maintenance. Um, Rachel and I were working through that today more um and they have a commission meeting tonight um so hopefully for the january meeting they will have a number that includes salaries programs and everything else to come back to this board but um there and we're going to estimate their revenue to be up and and it's kind of a wash right i mean it, it, it looks yeah good. we're going to have to see every month that they wait to come back to us. We get more data. Yeah, yeah. Um, less suits. The their revenue is still projected right now. Like I think seventy five thousand dollars over through the first five months over what it was the prior year at the same time. Um, and a lot of their revenue comes late in the year because when camp gets booked in April, and camp revenue they increase fees slightly this year to try to make because they saw what camp was actually costing them mm -hmm. they increased the cost of camp so their revenue is going to be up um i project it's probably going to be up two hundred fifty thousand dollars or so over the budget um obviously there's other accounts where revenue is up um so if we go back to a town meeting to adjust the budget there are plenty of revenue spots to adjust to offset the expense whatever expense they're looking at. Um, and we'll, when we have a final number for that, that'll be its own conversation of how the Board of Finance wants to handle making that adjustment. We know that we've already collected a million dollars in miscellaneous state revenue when we were budgeting 283, and we don't get the 283 that we budgeted till like May. So that million dollars we have right there is gonna be a million dollars more than what we budgeted in that one line item. Um, but park and rec real revenue because of the numbers that you keep getting is yeah. up 75,000 more than they thought it was going to happen over, over what, over what same, they did last year same timeline. And last year they collected 850. So even if they just broke even the rest of the way, they're at like 925 for the year versus a budget of 750. So right now, without any additional camp revenue, if camp just came in exactly what it was last year, they're at 925. So there's 175 of it there. Um, so we're not gonna be far off. It's not like we're writing a check for 300. You know, there's more revenue coming. Yeah, and I think um, I took to heart what Bob said at last meeting, and maybe we don't do, maybe we don't go from 750 to a million for park and rec revenue, maybe we go 750 to 900 or 950, knowing we have other revenue sources Pick to hit for that year. Oh, that um, might help the problem. Yeah. Later. Just in case they don't come. You yeah. Know, you know, revenue. but we know um, revenue wise, we should be good because of the additional state revenue. Right. But, you know, you guys have been trying to beat in my head that you have to separate revenue 
right? And expenses, yep. right? So, you know, when they when they come here in February and show their budget, it's going to look like it's up 25%. Yeah. That's the problem. This account, we, we have to know that going into right. it. Right. Yeah. You know, there's no way of not, you know, their new spending is going to be way up. You know what I mean? Right. So. Okay. Yeah. And so the, when we're in the budget, we talk about what the expenses are up percentage wise and dollar amount wise. Um, to me, dollar amount wise usually actually makes a lot more sense than percentage wise because it's budgets don't usually go down. Um, but we also talk about what the mill rate does associated to it. Right. So, um, so we'll look at all those pieces when we get there. So, um, so that's what I have for the comptroller report. If anybody has a question. Any other questions on the comptroller report? We can make a motion to accept Brad's report. We have a second. I'll second it. All in favor on Brad's report? Aye. Okay. Okay. The last thing on the agenda is the transfers, um, and that um, was added there. So, Brad, do you want to go over that? Yeah. So this is um, Nick. Do you need a copy? No, you can. Um, I might have been married, but I have a copy for it. <laughs> um, so these are the same numbers we've been looking at for June thirtieth expenses for the last four months. Um. It just at the, um, we're just at the point now that the audit is close. It's supposed to be due December 31st. Um, they are still waiting for pieces that are outside of, from us. Um, they are still trying to get as many clients done as possible. So which we're staying on top of them. Um, we've had some hiccups with water and sewer and closing that out because of some of the, uh, when we updated the accounting system, which we had to, um, because they were sunsetting the old system that we were on, the old version we were on. Um, now the tax collector's having issues getting reporting out that she needs. Um, and just like our printing check issue, they're less than helpful depending on who you get. Um, so we're working through those problems and anytime that they request anything from us, we're on top of it. Um, Sending stuff, I sent them stuff tonight because we're pushing as hard as we can. But the second they don't think that they can get us done by December 31st, they move to a client that they think they can. Um, I know the Board of Ed has been sending them a ton of stuff this week. Um, so we're working through it. Either way, I didn't want a reason that we got pushed off their schedule be is because the Board of Finance has an approved year end transfers. So finally today, I'm like, I'm done waiting for them on it. Let's just, we have a meeting tonight. Let's put it in front of the board. These numbers haven't changed. As I spoke to Nick earlier today, if the audit had a minor change of a couple thousand dollars on one of these, I'm sure they would view that as immaterial and they we wouldn't come back to the board. If there was a major audit change, we would come back and have to approve that. Um, so that's where we're at. Um, I can go through where the departments are at, but we've kind of talked at nauseum about what happened June 30th, 2023. 20, yeah, 2023. Um, obviously, the biggest ones are Park and Rec is over by 371. Um, employee benefits are under by 359. Um, lead is over by, I think, 100,000 or so, 132. Highway come under 75. You know, like... There's some bigger swings in some of these. The professional services, which is legal, but mostly legal, is over by 147. Um, that, which we'll talk a lot about again during budget processes, we look at five-year runs, 10-year runs, 15-year runs on some of those. And when we built out the 23 budget, those runs said budget 309 for that account. You have a bad year and you're at 457. So um, I haven't started doing that for in December, all the department heads, including myself, will put together their budgets. So when I start looking at legal services for the 25 budget, that 457 number is a real number out there that now is going to affect that average. But again, we try to budget on these things like with utilities of what the average is. Um, 
So, but if you were at three hundred nine, you would you you're not going to say, oh, we really need four fifty now. No, we look at the averages. We look at what's coming up. Some of it it's difficult, especially like take legal, right? So we're budgeting. I'm creating that budget in December. We're making adjustments with the first selectmen and the department heads in January. We're bringing that to the board of selectmen and board of finance in February for the town to have a public hearing in March and a town meeting in April. So we start building it 19 months out from the end of it. So we take what we know, but legal, all it takes is one thing to pop and you have $100,000, $200,000 in legal fees. Uh, so we'll look at it. Um, we'll look at that account. It'll be a conversation with Dan too of what do you know? What do I know? What do you see coming? To yeah. You? you know, so, but again, some of that is why we have a fund balance if we ever need to it, right? Like I don't want to tax the taxpayers right. on the worst to, case scenario right. for legal right. when we have some data that says that's the worst case. And if there's if we do have the worst case, we do have mechanisms to increase budgets if we need it to. Yeah. Um, so just kind of like we're talking about with what Park and Rec's going through right now. So our mechanisms to adjust the budget in the middle of the year if we need to, and if that's what makes the most sense. Park and Rec's a different situation, but if something popped, we would know about it, you know, so. So this 43 is going back in the general fund. Correct. Okay, so remember, you know, for the last six months, you were sweating and saying, man, I got to find some money. Yeah, I had hair when this started. <laughs> right. No, you didn't. <laughs> I mean, but you, you did pretty <laughs> But we did okay with some crazy numbers. We, You know, there was some health savings and stuff like that. Yeah. But, I mean, I remember that you, you know, you didn't look well a couple of days. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> that might just be how I look. <laughs> well, I'm yeah. starting to get an average yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> It was a lot of work to get to this 43, you know. Well, we're talking like 18,000, so the gate's open somewhere. Where was the gate opened up? You know what I mean? How, how'd you get yeah, to Where did you find more savings? Yeah. We were, well, we were talking about possibly 60. Oh. The difference between the 60 and the 43 is the claim for the bridge that was hit by oh, the bus. Yeah, the insurance company. We still it. don't have a resolution on it. I don't want to put a $15,000, a possible 15000 hole in 2024, if I book it and then we have a fight, I'd rather not create a hole for ourselves in 24, over 15 grand yeah. when we were able to make the list. Yeah, you need it. Yeah, exactly. so. I think 43,000 is a great number on an $89,000 budget that we overtaxed the town. I think that's just right. Yeah, I would rather, you know, know you can't make it perfect. Yeah, I would have rather gotten there in a different manner. Yeah, but yeah right, right. I would rather in the last couple of years, we've had more room and we've dumped money into CNR. Yeah, a couple yeah. hundred thousand. Right, yeah. but but we well we fund CNR in our budget. Correct. I mean, so yeah. but you know, the extra it would be money. nice to do it two ways. But yeah, right. but we do when we have better years than this, we do have a, then the ability to fund a CNR or now we have a tax stabilization fund. Um, which when this audit is done, because of what the revenue looks like, the revenue side of the 23 fiscal year is to the good $2 million. So at some so point, we fund, we're going to have some, we could fund some stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I think the conversation with this board is going to be, let's use some of that $2 million and Windfield. fund the tax stabilization fund. And we would have the ability, once we know what the 25 budget looks like, by we, I mean the board of finance, and then at a town meeting, would have the ability to then use that five hundred thousand dollars to help taxpayers that got hit over the head last year. Right. Because we're um, it's a way of giving them a refund. It's simple, yeah, simple as that. or just I, to lighten the burden. Yeah, a break probably more than a refund, but yeah. Well, you know, right, yeah, right. Break. Break. So, right. Right. but we're not we're not there yet. But those conversations are happening. I know Nick and I have talked about it. Dan and I have talked about it. Um, that is something that's on our mind of what's coming is that we will be looking at coming down the road ways to positively affect the mill rate, but also in a conservative, sustainable way. So. Bob, I'm going to lean on you here. I mean, you, you see no problem doing this premature before the auditors are done with their work and yeah, we're a couple well, thousand. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think this is, this is 
Um, someone want to make a motion on that to approve that? Um, I'll make a motion that we approve the transfers as presented and proposed by the contractor. Excellent. Do we have a second? A, we have a second by Cynthia. Any other discussion on that? We all know what's going on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. B, you're all good. All good. Okay. Um, John, all in favor on that motion? All right. All right. Can I, before you make a motion to adjourn, I just want to, Mary and I were looking at possible days for budget presentations just to make the board aware now and give you as much notice as possible. Um, Mary, at some point, typically sends out a tentative schedule, um, which I'm sure is on her brain to do. Um, so right now we're looking at presentations, which are joint meetings with the Board of Selectmen for Tuesday, February 6th, uh, Thursday, February 8th, and Tuesday, February 13th, which would leave then one week later, Tuesday the 20th, the Board of Selectmen would be their first deliberation and possibly only if they only needed one night for it. And then the Board of Finance deliberations would fall on, well, the presentation of the Board of Selectmen budget by the first selectman to the Board of Finance would be on February 27th. Typically the Board of Finance starts deliberating that night and then we would leave February 29th, that Thursday as the if needed day for deliberations which gets us to a public hearing in mid to late March. And the annual town meeting right now is tentatively thought to be happening uh, April 4th because of the, the presidential primary. We've had to, typically we do it on a Monday or a Tuesday, um, the presidential primary and having the timing of the referendum because uh, by charter it's within 15 days. It just gives us a little bit more time between our referendum and the primary. The um, I'm part of that too. They have to lock up the machines for two weeks after. Yeah, the, it's a the process with. Oh, the, yeah, we've gone through it before. So, okay. um, that's where we're at. Um, the budget. Uh, the departments. Their budgets are due to me December thirty first. Dan Sevy and I will go through it with the department heads in January, um, and then so that we're good to roll. I hope to have. Uh, the budget to the Board of Finance and Board of Selectmen by February 1st. So you have a couple of days before presentations, which are, that's the schedule now. We do have a little room in here. It's February, it's New England for snow, um, but I'd rather have a little bit of room and not need it. So. Great. Everybody go with that? Bobby Joe, you'll make it, right? Yeah. Matt, will you be sending out that schedule? Uh, Mary will probably send that out in the coming weeks. Okay, thank the you. Board of Selectmen have to vote on the date of the annual town meeting um, at their first January meeting. Yep. So we'll probably wait until that vote and then Mary will probably send out a tentative schedule because everything backs up off of that. Someone would like to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dave. Now, Fred, I didn't get an email about the Christmas party. Right. It's Thursday at noon. It's, it's